Unit 15, Agricultural Outputs. What are our agricultural outputs? Well, if you remember, way back at the beginning of this course, we had a unit on agricultural inputs. Anything added to or brought in to help the production of whatever it was being produced, whether it was crops or animals. Outputs are the result of agricultural activity. This includes, though, both the product outputs, those things that are the desired in, uh, end product of agriculture, um, the crops, the animals, the eggs, the whatever it is that is desired, but also includes the non-product outputs, such as plant debris or animal waste, um, that sort of thing. And non-product outputs can be considered a cost of doing business, a cost of agriculture, since they have to be disposed of in some way, and the cost of disposal can be substantial. So for the purposes of this unit and the discussion, we're going to be looking at the issues of non-product outputs or waste and how those non-product outputs are disposed of. First, we're going to take a quick look at how agricultural outputs affect productivity. Agricultural productivity is defined as the cost of inputs divided by the price that you get for your outputs. And you can see the formula there on the screen. Quite simple, productivity is the price you get for your outputs divided by the cost of your inputs. But I think a better equation might be productivity is equal to the price of outputs divided by the cost of inputs plus the cost of disposal of non-product outputs. Those disposal costs, if they exist, and some operations, as we'll see at the end of this presentation, are working to have no disposal costs, um, but if they exist, are true costs. Now, depending on how the outputs are disposed of and the cost of those methods, Dealing with outputs can have a significant impact on productivity and profitability. So obviously we need to take those outputs into account when planning any agricultural operation. Another thing to take into account is output regulation. In addition to the cost of disposal, there are regulations that govern the storage and disposal of such outputs and those regulations may mean that you need a special facility or something like that, um, which is an additional cost. The EPA and USDA have regulations about these things and so do the equivalent agencies and departments in each state. Now most of these regulations are designed for larger agricultural operations and primarily deal with animal waste. For instance, there are regulations um, regarding how uh, retention areas have to be built to contain the waste from hogs and distances from streams and the types of uh, enclosures that have to be available and, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> so. The regulations, though, are primarily concerned with operations that generate a lot of waste. So we're going to take a look at some of the methods of disposing of these waste outputs. Um, there are lots of methods to get rid of this stuff, and not all methods are available for every kind of output. And in addition, they can vary between municipalities. Um, not just state to state, but county to county within states, even 
um, townships and uh, villages and cities within uh, counties. Um, we're going to look at some of these, but it's really nothing more than an overview because the regulations are very diverse and it's, and it's difficult to touch on every single thing. Um, one method of disposal is to use the waste products as animal feed. Some crops which are no longer suitable for sale, um, they're a little past their prime, um, may be suitable for use as animal feeds. Uh, animals such as swine and goats, um, even chickens, um, will readily eat vegetables that are past their prime. Um, many feed operations use waste from restaurants and grocery stores to feed animals. Now, in some cases, the waste is cooked in large vats to kill bacteria, but depending on the waste material, that might not be necessary. Here we see some plant waste. This is the result of about 15 minutes of operation of a commercial kitchen. Um, and this waste is suitable at this stage for animal feed and also uh, for composting. Landfills. Landfill disposal is how most household waste is disposed of in the United States. Waste is carried from the source, the home, the business, the farm, wherever it's generated, to a landfill facility where it is added in layers of waste and soil. The waste in landfills tends to decompose very slowly as landfills uh, are an anaerobic operation. The, as the wastes are added in a layer, then that layer is covered with a capping layer of soil. It's first actually quite compacted, which removes much of the pore space and uh, the ability for oxygen to, get in, oxygen to get in. And then it's covered with a layer of soil and that's compacted on top and then another layer of waste that's compacted. So you can see how uh, landfills are anaerobic and the waste tends to decompose very slowly. And because of that nature of landfill, decomposing organic matter produces large quantities of methane gas. Methane gas produced by landfills is generally disposed of by drawing it to the surface in pipes and burning it. So we're producing a large quantity of greenhouse gas. Um, most of it can be brought together through a network of pipes brought to the surface where it's burned, producing other greenhouse gases, essentially. Though these days, um, some landfills, larger ones in particular, are creating uh, methane uh, recovery systems where the methane can be piped into um, storage tanks, um, can be added to natural gas lines, um, can be used to heat uh, the buildings at the facility, can be used to generate electricity. So at least at this point, um, we're moving to a, uh, a better method, I think, of getting rid of the methane that's generated. Another issue is that landfill space is limited, and many states have enacted regulations against disposal of organic waste. Primarily, they're talking about here um, landscape waste, yard waste, um, or waste from agricultural operations. Um, this photograph shows a landfill, uh, and you can see how down in this area, the garbage and the, the waste is being trucked in in these trucks. The back of the truck opens, the material's pushed out. It's spread out by these bulldozers into a relatively even layer, and at the same time is compacted, mashed down, so it takes up less space, but that's also one of the key things that makes it anaerobic. And then a layer of soil um, 
will be added over the whole thing. Now, typically what's going to happen is this entire area here is going to be filled first with waste, and then the entire thing will be covered with soil, uh, not just small areas at a time like that. Um, some landfills may uh, bury a pipe or two in the landfill and uh, start raising a pipe up to collect the methane, but more often um, it's more common to uh, wait until it's covered, until it starts generating the methane, then drill the hole down through um, to start collecting methane gas. Incineration. Um, incineration is simply burning material, but it's typically burning it in specialized high temperature facilities. With the temperature, the burning temperature high enough, um, most uh, toxins in the waste uh, can be destroyed, but not all. Um, burning is probably the second oldest method of waste disposal um, after simply throwing the waste on the ground, um, which might be considered sort of a landfill. Um, burning of waste on site, though, in an, uh, say in an agricultural operation, is usually prohibited in urban areas because of issues with air pollution and safety and odors. Um, so on-site burning uh, is usually prohibited, and it, and it doesn't use the same high temperatures as a real incineration process does. Um, so the release of toxins is possible from that. Um, so incineration is done by specialized facilities, but it's usually a much more expensive alternative than landfill disposal. And in the end, the ash that's left, um, much, much, much smaller in volume than the amount of waste that went in, but there's still some ash left, um, typically needs to be disposed of anyway, and that usually ends up in a landfill facility. Um, here's a specialized incineration plant, and uh, one of the key things to note is the uh, giant smokestack um, helps create a, uh, a draw or a draft of air through the incinerator itself, but it also um, exhausts the uh, gases and pollution created by this um, up higher in the atmosphere away from the level of people. Composting. Now, composting is becoming more and more common as regulations against putting landscape and plant waste into landfills start to become more widespread. Um, for instance, give an example of why this is the case. Um, when people say bag their grass clippings and dispose of them with uh, household trash, um, each week the volume of trash disposed of, um, grass clippings could account for as much as 50% of that volume. Um, on average, it's, it's substantially less than that, but it could still be, you know, 20, 30 percent. Then when you take into account pruning of trees and shrubs and all of that material that gets disposed of, that's an awful lot of uh, material going into a landfill and taking up space, which could be more effectively <clears throat> and efficiently disposed of um, by composting. Some municipalities um, have special uh, landscape waste pickup uh, schedules. Some of them will pick up landscape waste with special trucks that uh, run on the same cycle as the uh, garbage trucks. Um, that all depends. And then the landscape waste is often taken to a uh, composting facility where it's ground up in uh, large uh, chippers and shredders and grinders um, and then piled into windrows, where large-scale composting is usually done in windrows, where uh, 
large field is created that's relatively level and rows of landscape material are deposited in that field. And as we know, efficient composting requires that the compost be turned and um, aerated. And one way to do that then is to um, run a machine down the side of a pile that pushes the pile over towards the next row. So you'll start at the end, push the pile into empty space, then in the next row, push that one where the first one was, and so forth, all the way down the uh, field until everything's been turned. And then the process re is repeated with everything pushed back the other direction. Um, there are also, um, there's also special equipment that can turn um, an aerator, uh, a windrow in place without moving it uh, from side to side. Um, almost all municipalities, however, allow on-site composting of waste produced on-site. And since compost is a valuable resource in agriculture, this method is probably the most valuable to urban agriculture. Um, though uh, most municipalities have regulations against composting of waste produced off-site, so you couldn't accept um, waste from other properties other than the uh, properties being used for agriculture um, in order to compost it. And that type of waste, if it's going to be taken off-site, usually has to go to a, a licensed compost facility. Here's a, uh, an example of windrow composting. And this is a type of machine which can drive down a windrow. And notice, based on the height of the uh, person in the cab, I and mean, he's sitting, um, that this windrow, if we look at it, is uh, probably uh, fairly close to uh, five or six feet high and probably double that in width from side to side. This machine will straddle a windrow, uh, run down the windrow, make sure the windrow stays contained and doesn't get wider, but at the same time has uh, turning blades that will mix the material, turn it, and aerate it. Um, very efficient way to compost large amounts of material. Another sort of up and coming uh, method of disposal for materials is biogas production. Biogas is methane gas, also sometimes called uh, landfill gas or swamp gas. Um, biogas is produced anaerobically, which is what landfills are, um, in the absence of oxygen, can be produced from almost any kind of organic matter, including plant debris and animal waste. But animal waste generally produces more gas from any given initial input volume. Methane can be used for heating, for cooking, or to run internal combustion engines. Um, once waste has been used to produce biogas, the waste can then be composted again aerobically, yielding an additional amount of compost. This is a drawing of a uh, biogas production facility. Okay, um, you can see um, multiple sources of uh, material for the biogas thing. Um, the latrine pipe, so basically human waste, but also this could stand for animal waste. Um, here we have an additional inlet where materials can be dropped in and then sh shredded this little thing here indicates that uh, this is a mixer shredder type of operation. 
Um, and then that gets added to this tank called the digester. And this tank is a uh, uh, sealed system, so it goes anaerobic. Um, the material is digested by yeast, um, yielding methane gas, which goes up into the gas holder dome. And then that gas can be drawn off and used for any of the purposes for which methane gas can be used. Over here, as the material moves through the digester, it will eventually come to the outlet, drop into another containment area that is a bio slurry. At this point, it can be agitated and mixed so it becomes aerobic and it will decompose um, forming a uh, compost material. It's a process that is being used more and more for municipal waste dispose, uh, disposal like sewers from when you flush your toilets to uh, going to a sewer treatment plant. Um, next, uh, since you can compost anything in a, uh, or uh, use any sort of organic material for biogas production, um, it doesn't need to be confi confined to, uh, you know, sewage. Finally, we'll look at zero waste agriculture. This is the ideal that most, I believe, urban farmers want to work for. And this is an attempt to make positive use of every agricultural output with no waste needing to go off site for disposal. Um, zero waste could be as simple as properly composting waste and reapplying it to the soil. If animal waste need to be disposed of in large quantities, then a biogas generator might be employed and then composting. Um, in the unlikely case of compost being produced in excess of on-site requirements, the excess could be sold as a product or potentially uh, if there's no uh, monetary market for it, you know, could be given away to neighbors and that sort of thing. Um, so outputs have to be dealt with. Outputs are a real cost of doing business in any type of agriculture. Though the scale of urban agriculture generally makes it possible to make use of virtually every output without sending material to a landfill. Um, that completes this unit.